So now we can go to the objects and start creating them so we can start placing them on the scenes and seeing how it's going to look. So if we go to our objects, we can add a new object. And I'm going to start with the uh, backgrounds. So menu background. And I'll, I'll actually just call it backgrounds. Now, the I'll give it the menu animations because that's where all of them are. And as far as the group goes, I've created a group called UI or it's basically a non-interactable group. So however you want to term it. And I'm going to make sure that none of the detections are on it. Just to be super clear that this is purely UI. The first one, by default, because remember the first action is default. You can tell by the curvature, the circle, um, or the uh, capsule look of it. This first one is going to be our our main menu, the one that says pause. So I'll just say main. And then I'm going to give it not affected by gravity since we're on a side view. And I'm going to copy and paste it and I'm going to call this one options. And I'm going to give it the options motion. And this is really all that we need. The way that we're going to set up our menu logically is we just need the images in these objects and we will tell which one it's supposed to be on in the logic itself. All right, so we have the menu backgrounds. We'll need another object for each selection. So this may take a little bit just to get set up. The first one, we'll just go with uh, menu selection resume. We're gonna give it the menu animation the UI object group and get rid of all this stuff. Click OK and we're going to give it the selection. And since in our menu screen, when you open up the menu, the first option I want highlighted is going to be resume. So in this sense, I want this to be resume on as the default and I'm going to call this on and you could go even further and you could like color code it okay so green it's on and I'm going to check not affected by gravity so then we need uh, two other states to make this work for each of our buttons or selections I'm going to copy and paste this and we're going to need off now and I'll just turn off red and give it the resume off. So we have our on and our off. And then the last one that we need, oh, I'll just uh, paste it again. The last one we need, I'm actually going to just make it transparent because this is basically what it's going to do. And it's going to be no image. We don't want an image on this one. So we will select, don't select. And the reason why is in our logic, we're going to have a resume when it's selected. We're going to have a resume when it's not selected. But then we also need a state where you're in your options menu adjusting your sound effects. We can see that um, if I play test what we're going to set up, you can see that when we go to options, we need resume to disappear. So this state that we're setting up with no image allows us to do that. And the cool part is, is that this is really all the logic that we need in these selections and background. This is it. We're just setting up the states. So now we can copy and paste this and we can call this one the options. And all we do is we change, well, a little bit different. I'll, first off, I'll change the options on and then I'll change the options off. And the only thing different that we have to do is we need to rearrange them and we need to turn the 
off as the default action. Because when we pop up the menu, we want the white options text to be the default. So that's why we do that there. And then now we can copy the options and paste it and do the same now for exit game. And now all we have to do is change uh, the images. And then we can paste again. Oops. Okay. Paste again. This one will be called background music. And it's defaulted off and on. And you might be thinking, well, when you go to your second page of options, the background is highlighted first. So shouldn't it be the default? Well, because it's all intertwined in the same menu logic, we actually set it to on first. And actually, <laughs> sorry, this totally escaped my mind. We actually want it defaulted to no image. So we can adjust these like this. We want it defaulted to no image. That's right, because when we start the game, we do not see the background music selection. It's about right here. And then all of a sudden we see it. So, yeah. I almost missed that one. <laughs> and so the last thing that we need is we need our sound effects. And again, it's going to be default to no image because we don't want it right away. And then we'll get sound effects off and sound effects on. All right, so we have set up our buttons or our selections, sorry. I keep saying buttons like that are clickable buttons. And now let's start placing them, start getting them on the scene. So we'll go to our scenes and we're going to go into our menu scene. And if you saw my menu basics, I already had a simple menu thing all set up. I've deleted all of that and starting from scratch just to really solidify uh, the process to everybody. It's another reason why I'm also not scripting this video. I, I think, a, 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 hey, let's create a menu type experience is better, especially for new people coming into Pixel Game Maker. So right there, I added a new layer to the menu scene. And again, the menu scene is where all of your menus go. I'm going to change the name just to main menu. So I know that this is the main one because I could have multiple menus if I want. And so from here on our main menu, let me zoom in. Uh, we can go to our objects now and start bringing in our backgrounds. So first off, oops, let's get on main menu here. There we go. We'll just click in our menu. It doesn't matter where you click it into because it's going to be hard to click it in the center. Although I have snap on, this is a little snap thing. If you don't have it on, you can free uh, just freely move it. If you have snap on, then you can kind of guide it into position. So really, I don't really need to change much because 160 is half of 320, which is my resolution. So that's where that center point is, which is dead on half of the screen. So that's good. I might just adjust this to 70. I do want it more um, up than I want it in the middle of the screen as far as uh, the vertical portion goes. So that, that makes sense. And now let's start looking at how our selections will be placed. So I'll just go ahead and place them all in. We need our options, we need our exit game and everything. And you can snap it to the center just like that. And now let's get them uh, 
equal or even as far as the vertical goes. So with resume, I'm going to give it, well, let's go uh, 65. With options, I'm going to give it uh, 80. And then exit game, I'll go 15 more, so that will be 95. And I'll give it that. So they're all dead even here, and then they're 15 pixels apart from each other right there. So that's all set up as far as just the beginning. And I think I'm just going to stick to the main one first. We'll get into the options one also, but we'll just get this one on the screen for now. So that leads us to the next step. And we're going to have to have a way to get our menu on the screen. So we need to add another object. This is going to be our menu caller. And I'm going to give it editor icons. So I have, let me uh, just bring this up real quick. For here, we're just uh, waiting for input. Because this is just, we're just waiting to call. And I'm going to give it the normal gray transparency. I wish this was a default. That'd be awesome, but it's not. It's okay. And so we're going to have two logics. And sorry, this is kind of bringing us into step three, which is setting up our logic. So we've kind of finished step two by setting up the general main menu. And step two was adding the resources, creating the animations, and creating the object images. Now we're going into the logic. Now there's two steps to the logic. Uh, we need our menu caller, as I just created. And we need our menu logic. And for now, I'm just going to give it editor icon, UI, and going to go like this. Uh, touching the logic later. The reason we need two different um, logics right here, a separate caller and a logic, is because this menu is going to be disabled when it's not on. And the reason why is because you don't you want as mi as little objects running as possible during your game. So while there is an option to hide a menu but keep it enabled so you could still recognize calls and stuff from it. It's still going to be running in the background. And if you have a more complex menu system than this, it could start creating form image drops. So I'm going to make sure that my menu is always disabled on close. Therefore, I need a calling system separate so that I can call the menu since it will be disabled. So that's what this caller menu is for. And it's just, again, waiting for input. And the next thing that we need, after I click not affect by gravity, I can copy and paste this. And here I don't need any image or anything. And this will be the show menu. And the link that we need is going to be one thing for now. Eventually it will be more. But the one thing that we want is we just want OK to be pressed. At least this is how I'm setting it up. So OK to be on press. On press, again, meaning that you, you have to press it in order to be done. You can't just be holding A or whatever the OK button is for you. If you did select pressed, then you could literally have A held down from another input and it would trigger right away. I want it to be where you have to press OK to go to the menu. And then we hit OK there. And then in the show menu, this is where we will show our menu and we want it to display the main menu. And I want a fade in and I want it to be point uh, two second duration. 
and I'll hit OK. And then we need to place this. So where I'm going to place this, there's a few different ways you can place it. You can actually have it on your object, on your player object. You could have it as a connected object or something. And or you could place this object in every scene. Well, since it has an icon, you can keep it outside the scene. But you could place it in every scene, and then that would be your menu caller. Or you could place it on your default menu screen, which is the gameplay HUD. Because you're usually going to want your gameplay HUD visible for most things. So that would be a good place to also have it. You could just have it chilling right here with your gameplay HUD. Make sure it's out of sight so you can't see this icon. This icon is just so you know it's there. Like I was telling you, I have a editor's icon where I just have a bunch of different icon colors that I can use just for when I just have logic that doesn't need an image. So now with the color place, we can actually play test this and we should be able to get the menu to come down or to fade in. And there we go. So the menu now is working. We now need to set up the logic. Hey everyone, thanks for hanging in there for part two. In part three, we'll go over setting up input logic for our the main portion of our menu. And so yeah, we'll see you at the next video.